Hello, Blood Bowlers. Welcome back. Uh, episode six now. Now we're getting into something, probably the most complicated part of the game. It's something that you may not see often, unfortunately, in a Blood Bowl match, but it is passing. And uh, we're going to have a little look at how you pass and also how you hand off and the kind of like how you can achieve that because some of you will be trying to learn the game with players who have that ability. Others not so much, which is good. We've got these two teams set up because the Elven Union are pros at passing the ball. So yeah, we're gonna look at passing, handing off the ball, and then we're also gonna detail interference and interceptions. And I think it's called deflections as well now. It's a big old episode. We're gonna need this. And we're going to need some passing templates as well. And uh, I guess the best thing to do is just get straight onto the pitch. Hello, uh, Blood Bowlers. We're on the, back on the pitch. And uh, we're going to now be looking at probably one of the most complicated parts of the game, in my opinion. Um, other than rostering a team and kind of managing a team during a league season, I think the passing element of Blood Bowl is probably the most complicated. And I actually think it's become a little bit more complicated with this new addition. So, what are you going to need to pass the ball? Now, we've already kind of touched on what you need to play Blood Bowl, but there's a few things you're going to want to make sure you have when you are attempting a pass. The first is going to be your uh, pass ruler. You're going to need this. You're also going to want your, or going to want, sorry, your deviation template, as this is going to be required for a couple of the uh, possible pass options. And you're probably going to want your rule book on hand because there is quite a few little um, things that are going to come up alongside your dice and all that kind of thing. So, so what is a pass action? A pass action is a once per turn action that one of your players can do once they're in possession of the ball. So they don't necessarily need to have the ball at the start of their action. They can move, pick up a ball and pass. Or if they're already in possession of the ball, they can move and pass. But they can no longer move after they've passed the ball. So once the ball has been thrown, they are effectively finished. They can't do anything else for this turn, so you can turn them around. So we're going to have a quick look at what that looks like with our Elven Thrower before looking at what it would look like with a Elven Lineman to show you the variance and the difference before we crack onto things like the catching of the ball and uh, pass interference or interceptions. So let's have a look all right guys so we've currently got two players set up on the pitch we've got our elven union thrower here who's in possession of the ball and we've got an elven union catcher over here so we're going to take on the role of the elf coach for most of this uh, tutorial so what you need to first do is sort of nominate the player who's passing so you actually declare a pass action with your player. So a little bit like a blitz, which we discussed in the last episode. Once you've declared a pass, you basically have to do it. If you don't do it during that action, then you can't do it with anybody else. So you couldn't just say, I'm going to declare a pass with this player and then decide, actually, I want to do it with someone else. And um, of course, there's only one ball, so it's not quite as difficult as that. But effectively, with this player, once you've declared it, you can do it, but you need to make sure you do that first. Now, the ball can be in possession of your player already and most likely will be, although there are situations where potentially you may want to move first, roll your pickup roll before then achieving a pass. And that's also um, possible as well. However, once you have moved to the ball and picked it up or moved with the ball and then done your pass, the player can no longer move. So they'll actually have, once they've achieved the pass, they will uh, actually finish their movement for this turn and you'll be able to continue elsewhere, considering or assuming you've not rolled a turnover. So we're just going to assume for a simple situation here that this guy is in possession of the ball. He's moved as far as he needs to and he's going to try and pass it to this catcher. Now, before we do that, we're going to have a quick look at this ruler. So this lovely thing here. As a few zones, which I'm going to quickly explain now. So right on the end, you've got a small little circle here, which is what you'd use to sort of place over 
the player who's intending to pass. And then there's four zones indicated by the numbers in the middle here. So the first zone is a quick pass. Second zone is a short pass. Third zone is a long pass. And fourth zone is a long bomb. Now these are different modifiers, which we'll get into in a moment. However, we are going to attempt to pass the ball. So to do that, we're going to effectively pop this over the top of our elf here out of sort of perspective but you, it's kind of placed over the top and then we can also then see right where's the target zone the target zone we want is effectively this elf here so when you consider that this actually needs to completely cover the square in question which from what you can see here this elf falls actually into the third zone as opposed to the second zone because the whole square isn't sort of completely covered by this area. So what we're going to quickly do, I'm going to pop this guy to here and you can instantly see that that elf is now solidly in this area or in this, uh, this zone, which is a short pass. So there's different modifiers for each of these ranges. If the elf was in this range, the pass would have no modifiers at all and you'd roll on your passing agility or sorry, your passing stat as normal. This would be minus one on your passing stat. This would be minus two. And then the long bomb over here would be minus three. So your passing stat is a little bit like your agility roll or agility stat where it's a sort of a target roll. So for this elf, his passing stat for a thrower anyway is a two plus, which is as good as it can get as far as I know. So effectively this guy's trying to roll two plus to get this ball to this guy. However, the zone that he's in is currently minus one. So in, in reality, that pass would be a three plus. So let's see if we can uh, achieve that. So we actually do. So it's worth noting here when you're passing a ball that Rolls of six effectively always succeed. And we'll come into what rolls of one are anyway. So even if you have a really poor passing stat and you're trying to pass long distance, even a six will achieve it. But in this case, we managed to roll a four and all we needed was a three plus. So this ball was actually going to launch the direct square that we wanted it to. And then our uh, catcher, we get a chance to grab the ball out of the sky. So that would have been a successful pass in that situation. And our little uh, thrower would have achieved some SPP, which we'll come into later, but they could effectively get SPP for every completion they, they get, but not the catcher, it's only the thrower in all of those situations. So it's worth noting it down as you play either on the, the Google Drive sheet or on your own roster when a player gets a completion. Now, we're going to switch up a little bit change these players around and uh, show the variations in what might happen um, when rolling the dice for a pass. All right, guys. So we've actually changed the player who's throwing the ball here. We've given it to a less sort of optimal player, a normal line elf the Elven Union team. So they've only actually got a passing stat of four plus. This is going to show you the variation in the dice rolls that are required. So instead of needing a two plus in this quick pass section, the uh, standard throw or the standard line elves needs a four plus, which then goes up from fives to six, including then another six, because sixes always exceed in the long bomb zone. But we're going to focus on these three now. Now that there are effectively four ways that a pass can kind of culminate. We've had one which was an accurate pass already where we rolled the dice required to get it to the catcher. But I'm going to show you the other three. So any situation where when you're trying to roll a pass, you roll a one for any of these, direct one, unmodified, you will actually fumble the ball from the thrower's square. So when attempting a pass, you roll a one, you actually lose the ball back in this position. So we lost it to the four there. So the ball would have scattered out from beneath him into this square here. He would have caught it on his armor. He's not actually a thrower. He's a lineman really. 
and that ball's gone backwards, hit the deck, and that would actually be a turnover, and your opposition your opposition player would effectively get to start their turn, which could be a disaster. However, there are a few in-between options, which are a little bit difficult to get your head around. And the better your thrower, the less likely you are to get these, of course. So if you're in a sticky situation where you need to attempt to pass with a player that's not as good, then you need to be aware of these. Um, and it is still possible for other throwers to achieve them as well, or normal throwers if your dice are bad enough. Now, there's two op two different options. So we've there's the wildly inaccurate and inaccurate. Inaccurate will kind of echo home with a lot of older coaches, which is effectively when you do not pass the success roll you need. So in this case, you might need a five, but you don't achieve it, but it's not modified to a one, which can be a bit complicated, but effectively we have to do the negatives after the dice roll. So let's say we were trying to get to this distance, which is normally a five plus. So we roll a four here for this one, um, which would be modified down to a three, which is why we would normally need a five plus because a five plus would be modified down to a four by the negatives or the negative, which would be a success, which is why we need a five plus in this zone. However, obviously in this zone, we only need a four because the passing stat is a four and there's nothing being modified. So in this situation, we rolled a straight four, which is modified to a three, but more importantly, not modified to a one. So when that happens, the ball is still launched. It goes up into the sky, but actually bounces three times before it lands. So effectively it's inaccurate, but it's gonna land somewhere around here. So we actually roll this three times. So the ball's here, ball's here, the ball's actually been lobbed to this square over here. Now, that is a turnover unless you're lucky enough to have another player under this ball, which is possible, that ball is going to hit the deck, bounce one more time, and that'll be a turnover. If there's an opposition player under the ball, they also get a chance to catch it, but of course it wouldn't be a turnover for them because it's currently your turn. However, for any reason now that that ball's not in your hands, it's a turnover. So you can see that inaccurate could end up sort of scattering quite close to one of your players it can also scatter back onto them and we'll detail catching like loose balls um in a little bit but that's an inaccurate pass which is kind of this sort of it's not a great option to happen but it's the sort of second best option apart from an accurate pass all right and a wildly inaccurate pass would be something that actually modifies to a one. So not a direct one, but modifies to a one. So for example, in this situation, passing in a short pass, I roll a two, or the elf coach rolls a two, that would be modified to a one effectively. Now, now it gets a little bit more crazy. When it's a, a modified to a one, it's called wildly inaccurate. And in that situation, you actually deviate the ball from the thrower himself. So in this case, our line elves just tried to pass. He's rolled a two. It's not looking great. And it actually deviates from his square. So we're going to roll a d6 and a d8. And you can see here that ball is going six squares to the direction of one, which is this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think it's even gone off the pitch. So... You can see it's gone all the way over here. And it just it as like just like with inaccurate, it's actually going to hit the deck and bounce for one. So it's going to bounce to there and it's a turnover again. Unless, of course, you're lucky enough to have a player in this position to grab it yourself. But again, it's very, very unlikely. So throwing with players that are, you know, uh, not, haven't got as good a passing skill or passing stat are very likely to throw this ball somewhere completely different to where you want it to be. So not having a designated thrower in a game kind of limits you to what you can do with the passing game. But as you can sort of see here, it, it, yeah, it's a little bit complicated. There are obviously four different ways the ball can sort of end up moving, either not moving at all, deviating slightly or 
sort of scattering slightly, randomly deviating like this if it's really poor, a really poor throw, or preferably, you know, in this situation, our line elf rolls a five, and the catcher then gets a chance to catch it. But we're already looking at a one in three chance of that succeeding. So there are a few other things to think about when passing the ball. Now we're going to bring our little thrower back this time just to show you some extra changes. So for every player that is marking your uh, thrower when they attempt to throw the ball is also a minus one modifier. So in this situation, we'll pop the uh, catcher within the quick pass range. So this would normally be a two plus for this thrower. However, because there's no modifiers on the ruler. However, there are two tackle zones, just like before in the last episode on the ball carry, which would be an additional minus two. So in that situation, the dice roll required would actually be a four plus. And there's also then more chance of it going wildly inaccurate or inaccurate because of those modifiers. So we're gonna try and roll it. We're gonna try and roll the four plus. We rolled a three. Uh, which basically means that that's modified down to a one, which means that with the, with the negative two from the bit being marked by two players, which means that the ball will actually deviate randomly, D6 and D8, just like we just shown. So, okay, five in the direction one. So we would actually throw it way over this way, way off the screen again. Sorry about that, but it would have gone over here somewhere. It would then bounce and it would be a turnover. So you can see how adding their modifiers onto the throwers or getting tackle zones in on them means that you are very likely to stop the pass happening in the first place. That's worth noting for interceptions and deviation, not deviation, deflections and interceptions, that you don't even get the chance to roll an interception unless it's not a fumble. So if a thrower rolls a one directly, then you don't get a chance to deviate uh, deflect but if anything else any other role you still get a chance to even intercept this ball here that went over this way so i hope that makes sense it was it's a very complicated part of the game it can be a little bit difficult to gauge but it is also worth remembering especially with distances that even in the rule book they do have this little template here which you can use if you're not sure on the distances or the ranges, especially as you start to go into diagonal passes, it can be a bit difficult to work out exactly what square is covered. So this is effectively the same as the range ruler. It shows you the kind of quick pass, short pass, long pass, long bomb zones. So always worth considering using this in case you're a bit confused about which distance is which or you can't really tell however it's worth having the ruler because you're going to need it for those interceptions and deflections right that's that sorted so let's have a little crack on with catching the ball all right guys so catching the ball is a little bit more simple than throwing the ball um effectively there's sort of two options for catching the ball there are the accurate catches when a part or a thrower or a throw has managed to land on a player accurately, which is of course when either you roll a six or pass a passing skill dice roll. So we're gonna assume that we've achieved that with this thrower. Now that's gonna effectively come over here and land on this player. No changes, no deviation, no scatter we've passed the, the passing roll it's landing on our player over here and effectively he gets a chance to roll an agility roll to catch it um and it's a straight agility roll so in this case he's grabbing the ball out of the sky on a two plus there you go so he achieves it on a six and it's worth noting that six is always succeeding in this situation as well as one's always failing in this situation too so when it comes to catching, some players have specific skills that allow them to re-roll the dice roll, which includes this catcher. He does have catch built in, which means he gets a free re-roll, a little bit like dodge gives you a free re-roll for a dodge. 
catch does the same thing. And it's worth noting that pass actually does give you a free reroll for a pass roll if you so desire. You don't have to use it, of course. So catching the ball is very much just an agility check, to be honest. Um, however, if, for example, the ball you know deviated slightly in the sky, so we uh, didn't quite roll wildly inaccurate, but we had an inaccurate pass and the ball did a few scatters and actually ended up trying to look potentially landing on this guy here instead of the intended target. This would be almost like a, a loose pass or a sort of scattered ball um, catch. And when that happens, it's actually minus one because the ball's not quite accurate enough to make it a simple catch. It's going to be a little bit more of a difficult one. So when that happens, you still roll on your agility, but you minus one. So for both of these guys being agility two plus, it would actually be a free plus to catch the ball still. And that actually would have been achieved. Now it should never be a sort of loose, loose catch effectively if you're passing it to the exact square you wanted to. But sometimes you may be in a situation where like we just rolled it scattered to the wrong guy or there are a few other situations where the ball's been thrown onto the pitch and it happens to land on one of your players or you get to place a player underneath a high kick result on the kickoff table. Anything like that, where it's not an accurate throw or an accurate, effectively accurate ball will be minus one. And then effectively on top of that, we're going to use our line elf just because we need to make sure we use the right rules. On top of that, just like there are negatives on the throw, any tackle zones on a player trying to catch the ball are also minus one. So this line elf, even though he's a line elf, he can still catch the ball quite well. He would normally be catching it on a two plus if there had been an accurate pass, which we're going to assume it has been. But with each of these modifiers, it's minus one. So for every marked player on your receiver, effectively in this situation, it's minus one from their roll. So a two plus would go to a four plus in this situation, which he would actually fail. So in any situation where the catch is failed, you again, like as if you'd fumbled it, you scatter it from the player in question. Like this, the ball hit the ground and it will be a turnover. Of course, in these weird situations that come up, if the ball had scattered to the five here and then got onto this player, he would then get a chance to catch a inaccurate catch effectively so it would be a three plus he would actually catch the ball and it wouldn't be a turnover because the ball actually hasn't hit the ground so that's worth remembering is it from a pass if the ball doesn't hit the ground it's not a turnover so that's catching the ball there's no other real things that happen with that it can it will come up for uh, interceptions in a moment but once you've caught the ball successfully and you haven't been yet, so in this case our thrower has finished, he'll be able to shoot off wherever he wants. So, you know, once you've received the ball, it's worth remembering that you aren't actually finished yet, especially if you've not actually initiated this player this turn. I hope that helped. Now we're going to have a little look at probably the next most complicated thing, which is intercepting and deflecting the ball. All right, guys, so I'm um, going to quickly focus on deflections and intercepting. But first, I want to thank John Naylor in the comments pointing out that I'd done this wrong um, in the previous video. So I'm going to re-upload this video so you may notice it's come up again. So there's a small little alteration. I'm going to go through how interceptions work because I got it incorrect uh, last time. So basically, what you need to think about first when you're throwing the ball is the guy who's doing the pass. So in this case, our elf is going to try and attempt to pass to this uh, catcher over here. Now, before you use the ruler to work out who can deflect, you actually need to determine where the ball's going to land. That includes all of the scattering. You might have thrown a wildly inaccurate pass, an inaccurate pass, um, or an accurate one. Whatever it is, you need to work out exactly where the ball's going to land first before you place the ruler. So the throwing coach will use the ruler to determine their range distance or the range they need to roll on their throwing passing ability. Um, but that doesn't mean necessarily that the deflections go from that measurement. 
So for example, the elf coach will measure over here. And in this situation, if the ball was going to land exactly in the square that this guy here, the catcher, could catch it, then yes, this player here could intercept. And we'll explain what that means in a minute. But before we get into deflections, if the player with the ball who is attempting the pass rolls a one, they will obviously fumble the ball. And if they fumble the ball, nobody gets to do a deflection roll at all. So that's the first thing to think about. Now, we're going to assume that we've done an accurate pass, whichever it might be. I think you need to roll a probably a three plus in this situation. We need to roll an accurate pass, which means that the ball is going to land exactly in the square we desire it to land into. But now for deflections, it's at this stage where you then, so we're going to leave the ball red to show it's not been caught yet. But we're going to basically now place the ruler over the uh, ball where it's going and see who can deflect. So in this situation, the guy in the middle here under the ruler, so the squares that are partially or fully covered can be intercepted from. So in this case, the black orc can, in, can deflect, but the goblin in the top here, uh, he cannot in deflect or intercept the ball. So that would then change if, let's say, for example, we'd rolled a wildly inaccurate pass or an, an inaccurate pass and the ball had scattered a couple of times to here. Let's say he'd rolled a two, I think in this situation, would have made it an inaccurate pass. We've rolled our D, D8 a few times and this is where the ball's going to land. We then actually place the ruler over the ball's position and we can see that the goblin square is actually partially covered by the ruler which means that the goblin in this situation would be able to intercept and deflect, but the black orc in this situation wouldn't. He is just the wrong side. So that's the slight variation in what we talked about previously. So what is a deflection and an interception? Well, players who can deflect and intercept the ball effectively get to then do a dice roll against their agility stat or their agility roll. Um, and it's worth remembering that it changes. It changes depending on the uh, success of the pass. So for example here, that would have been an accurate pass. A deflection would be minus three to the dice roll. If it was inaccurate, minus two. And if it was wildly inaccurate, it would be minus one to the dice roll. So our little black hawk here would have needed a six because sixes are always a success and then the flip side of that ones are always a fail so for an accurate pass he would need a six because it'd be minus three of his agility which is four plus standard anyway uh, and then an in inaccurate pass would have been minus two so still a six but a wildly inaccurate pass if he'd been over here somewhere and the ball had gone this way he would actually be in def in def deflecting on a five plus now once you've deflected the ball, uh, depending, you need to work out which, what dice roll you need to roll. And it's always worth rolling it because if you do squat, swap the, the, the ball out of the sky, you do then get a chance to turn that into an interception, which would then cause a turnover. So that's worth considering. It's always worth doing it if you can. And if you're the passing team, you're going to want to try and avoid passing over opposition players as much as possible because even though you might have a high agility and you might or high passing stat you, you you might still get that odd interception in there that you don't want so we've shown the modifiers here um once that's been done and the ball let's say has been deflected we've rolled a six we pass from here to here but a six has been rolled the, the ball's then been deflected and then you have to then catch the ball in a similar way as to what we just detailed, however, it is an additional minus one to catch a deflection. So to turn it into an interception, this black orc would then need to roll another five plus, which he doesn't. The ball would bounce off to here, but the pass was unsuccessful when the balls hit the ground and then it would be a turnover. So the interception rules have kind of become two parts, deflections into interceptions. Um, so the intercepting team does have to roll a couple more dice. The, the, the worst the throw is, so the, you know, the differencing difference of grades of throw, the worse the throw is in the first place, the easier it is 
to, to deflect in the first place. So the better throw, the less chance there is of a deflection. It's also worth noting that little guys grant plus one to interceptions and deflections. Sorry, just to deflections. So if this guy was going to pass to the Blackhawk and there was a elf in the way, they would get plus one to the roll, taking into the neg taking onto in account the negatives as well. I hope that helped. I hope that kind of breaks up a little bit. You got to think about where the ball's going, regardless if it's going to the target square or not, or going elsewhere. You got to think about that before you do your deflections. All right, let's move on. So handoffs are, again, a little bit like a pass action once per turn. Uh, one of your players can do a handoff and like the pass, you need to declare it. And then if you don't use it, you've effectively lost it for this turn. So a little bit like a pass, the player who is doing the handoff can either be in possession of the ball already or move on to it and pick it up, continue moving and then hand off. Which in this situation, we're going to show you. So this little guy is going to run up pick the ball up and then hand off the ball to this little fellow here in preparation for a throw teammate, but we're going to go into that in the next episode. Um, so this little guy's going to run in. He's picking up the ball on a three plus, which he achieves using his agility of three plus. He's then going to move next to this player. So when you're doing a handoff, you need to be adjacent to your player you want to pass the ball to. Now, there's a quick thing to remember here. A handoff and a pass are different, but they effectively do the same thing. They're about transmitting the ball from one player to another. However, a pass uses the, uses the ruler. A handoff just effectively dumps the ball to an adjacent player. So in this situation, we're going to give the ball to our little goblin here. So all you need to do it is roll a catch roll. Um, Unlike a pass, there's none of the dice rolls needed and calculations needed to do the pass. All you need to do is roll a catch. So players that don't have a passing stat or players that, uh, you know, would fumble the ball or do all other kind of things normally, we don't have great passing ability, can still hand off the ball. So we're going to pop the ball onto this player and roll a catch roll, which for a goblin is a three plus, and he actually achieves it. Now, just like a pass, this player actually can't do anything else now. They effectively finish their move, but this guy can effectively now is free to do what he likes. Um, it's worth noting that a handoff doesn't give the player effectively handing off the ball any SPP. That's only eligible for a pass. Um, and it's also worth noting that you can do a pass at that distance. Like you don't have to be two squares away to achieve a standard pass. You can actually run right up to your player here and pass the ball in a normal way, especially if you've already done a handoff elsewhere on the pitch. So you can start to consider a few options where uh, you'll be able to throw a ball and hand the ball off. So you can do two interchanges in a turn where you might hand off here and then move and pass to someone else further down the pitch. So... That's handing off the ball. It's also worth noting that any modifiers are only applied to the receiving player. So let's say, for example, our little guy was here and we had another elf here, for example. Let's put him here. And our uh, handoffy or handoff player is sitting here. There'll be no negatives here from this side because effectively all this player is doing is he's just going to move in and hand the ball off. So this guy doesn't have any interference with the, the actual catch roll. However, here there is a negative from this player here. So it would be effectively a four plus catch instead, which in this situation doesn't achieve. So the ball will actually bounce from this player, just like normal, back to this player here who would then get a chance to catch it. But let's just assume it's landed in an empty square. Now, assume it had landed on this guy again, bouncing backwards, he would effectively get a chance to catch it, but he would then suffer the modifiers. So it would be minus one on a randomly deviating ball. So it'd be minus two, needing fives, which he's failing. It bounces to the five, which 
we may as well play this out. Finally, lands on the Black Orc, who would need fours normally, but he's got minus one for the Elf and minus one because it's a loose ball, so it would be sixes to catch the ball, which he doesn't achieve, which then bounce out to the three, which actually finally nestles the ball just here. So you can see handoffs are an easier way to move the ball, especially if you want to do like a slingshot move, move up, hand off, continue moving along the pitch. And of course it can all go wrong. And in that case, it would be a turnover and it would now be the elf's turn to potentially run in and grab that ball and score themselves. So I hope that helped. Passing is probably the most complicated part of the game. It's also probably one of the least seen parts of the game very often. Very few teams do more than one pass a game. Sadly, I think, personally, I feel like there should be a bit more passing. I think it should be a little bit easier. But you will see a lot of handoffs. You will see a lot of those, especially in running teams where they're trying to move the ball quickly without rolling lots of dice. And you very, very rarely see interceptions and deflections, uh, mainly because you can avoid them fairly easily and they are also very hard to roll even if there is a potential for one so i hope that's helped uh drop any questions in the um comments box because this one's a proper brain teaser and uh i hope that it's made some more sense of it and the best way that i think to kind of learn it is to kind of get into it and just try a few practice throws, just put a few players around, put some people marking them and see what you can achieve. So we were going to do the throw teammate rules in this episode, but I think this is a huge amount to take in. And we're actually going to look at that in the next episode, which is where a big guy tries to throw a little guy. Similar kind of amount of rules, much more fun much more silly so we'll get out of this episode and join us for the next one when we detail throwing teammates bye